So, you've decided to get yourself a new car or motorcycle. I'm not here to tell you to not do it. I'm here to congratulate you and to ask you whether you've read the fine print closely. There's this one little checkbox. You may have accidentally ticked it off without realizing it. A lot of people do. You'll notice this because of how they behave. They're the ones who are worrying about where they've parked their car or bike, whether it's in a packed parking lot, whether it's in the shade, in the sun. They're worried about roads, whether they're good, whether they're broken, whether they're slushy. They're worried about the weather, whether it's hot, whether it's raining. They're worried about themselves with their vehicles. They're worried about stones chipping windscreen of dens. They're worried about paint fading. They're worried about speed breakers scratching their vehicles. They're worried about tires getting gouged by potholes. They're worrying a lot. It's not uncommon, I admit, but it's avoidable. This is because of a big mistake that people end up making even before they've taken delivery of their vehicle. It's about how much they've spent. They have overstretched. Now, instead of a vehicle, they're ending up having an investment that needs to be secured, a possession that needs to be protected, something that they want to keep in showroom condition. And in exchange, they're trading up the joys that they wanted to actually acquire. The fun of riding and driving takes a backseat to money, right? So the question is, how much should you be spending for your car or bike? There's no straight answer for me to provide to you here. It will vary depending on how much you earn, how old you are, what your needs are, what your dreams are. But I could tell you how I think about it. I would say, think of a number that you feel comfortable with, something that's not a stretch and you wouldn't hesitate about spending. And then I'd say, spend less. For instance, if you could spend 10 lakh rupees, I would say put aside 20%. This is is your motoring fund. This is for everything outside of your on-road costs, your warranty costs, your service costs. This is for everything you have dreamt of, everything you want to do as a life with your machine. It's for the trips you want to have, the accessories you want to add, the what-if scenarios that you keep worrying about, and consumables, something that I'm particularly fond of, tires, uh, brake pads, oils. At one point for my motorcycles, I had one loft full of tires. I had half few sets from my Duke. I had brand new sets for my Impulse. And I had two sets at one point for the Busa. I was the happiest man on the planet then. Because it meant I could use my motorcycles how I wanted, when I wanted. And I had a fun aside for maintaining the bike, for taking care of the rims. So I could use it unhesitatingly, unwaveringly in the manner that I expected. I have never abused my vehicles in any which way. I haven't used them carefully, but I have used them fully. That's what they're there for. To do what I want, to go on journeys as I wish. I may ride or drive down roads that I have never used before, knowing fully well that they are not in great shape. I'll be careful, but I will go. I will not let that stop me. Because the way I think about it, I may have bought the machine and I own it, but it shouldn't be owning me. The bike or the car shouldn't own me. I shouldn't be spending my time worrying about it. It has to do what I want it to do and make my life better. So how much should you spend? Well, there are much smarter people who have great theories about it, and I'm just sharing those with you. For example, one way of thinking about it is, how much ever you make in a year, do not spend more than half of it on your new car or bike. So if you're spending seven and a half lakh rupees on a vehicle, that means you would be making 15 lakhs a year. And in this, I will still say, if you're looking at smaller motorcycles, make that motoring fund of yours bigger as a percentage. Keep aside 30%. Because if this is going to be your first mid-size motorcycle, then chances are you want to get proper gear. 
you want to get some accessories if you're looking at a adventure tourer you want some protection you want some luggage and you want that right riding suit right uh and of course helmets gloves everything you want it and when it comes to a car i think a lot of people want to protect the paint so whether it's going for ceramic whether it's going for ppf whether it's getting alloy wheels or better tires i mean keep this fund aside and it will just pay you back huge dividends in terms of how you enjoy without overspending without stretching yourself and it will make life much easier even for your next purchase now the second way of thinking about it is the 2010-4 rule this is in terms of emis so 20 is percentage 20 percent of your um annual income sorry 20 percent. i got that wrong it's finance right 20 percent of the car or bike's on-road price should be your down payment right i got that right now 10 percent should be the emi cost in your monthly income so if you make a lakh of rupees in a month your emi should not be more than ten thousand rupees and your loan should not be more than four years long if you do the math you'll realize that this might be a bit of a buzzkill and eliminate some options but i think it's a very prudent way of thinking about it because it's going to let you buy a vehicle which you could easily write off because you've got insurance to help you out in those scenarios you've got warranties so it will not pinch no matter what happens to the vehicle and that sense of freedom is an incredible joy where you do not run around circles of your vehicle you just use it and enjoy it you take care of it but you are in focus not the vehicle if you choose to take care of it and you should that's awesome you don't have to worry about it all the time that's the big thing now the budget should always keep in mind what your needs are for instance you might be wanting to do a golden quadrilateral drive or go up to the mountains so your budget can go up or down and like we said for smaller motorcycles the percentage can be more because you might want to spend on things which are greater in proportion to the cost of the motorcycle itself for instance one of my friends at one point joked i used to have a dainese uh, one piece leather suit i used to have an ri helmet and i used to be riding a duke which at that point was 2 lakh rupees so he used to he used to tell me your riding gear costs more than the motorcycle that you're riding and thumbs up to that right i remember that was it was hilarious i hadn't thought about it that way but it was a bigger cost than the motorcycle itself that i owned at that time but these things last and you should invest in good equipment for your vehicles you should plan ahead so coming back to your budget and your new car new bike i hope you've thought this through i hope you have not ticked that box and i hope that you do get to live all the dreams and find all the happinesses that you were looking for when you dreamt of owning this new car or bike make sure that it doesn't own you